And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Ape Games came out with Duck, Duck, Go, capitalizing on people's complete fascination with rubber duckies. I mean, it's not just Ernie, everybody loves rubber duckies, and so they made a game about it, Duck, Duck, Go. Well, now the second game, I guess, in this series is out, and that's Duck, Duck, Safari. Except these ducks don't look necessarily like ducks. Of course, half the ducks in Duck, Duck, Go didn't either. But anyway, these ducks are shaped like animals. Now, Animal Safari is interesting because it actually comes with five different games. So, in these kind of situations, I always think, well, hey, if I don't like one of the games, I might like one of the others. Well, as it turns out, there's more than one game in this set that I really, really enjoy, and I think it's worth getting just because of those games itself. Nice components. Kids will like it. Let's look at it. The game comes with five different games, as I said. Safari Sprint is basically a race game. In my opinion, it's the best game in the box. High Low High Jinx is also a very good game in which you're trying to collect cards based, trying to have the cards of the right animals at the right time. Animal Hunt is, well, basically, it's a memory match variant. Uh, Herds is kind of rummy ish in style. And Savannah is kind of a tile placement game. Uh, not exactly something like Carcassonne, but along that genre. Well, you can buy the game to find out about those three. I'm going to quickly talk about Safari Sprint and High Low High Jinx. Safari Sprint is played on this long racing board, and the ducks are going to be racing around and around. Dr. Livingston is here as kind of a neutral observer, but he's still racing. And then each animal, each player will pick an animal that they want to control in this race. Characters will be using cards from a deck that shows each of the animals in numbers 1 through 6. And basically, on a player's turn, you go in turn order. The first player will place a number here under the first one. So let's say he places a monkey 4. The next player plays a zebra 2. The next player plays a Tiger 5. Since 5 is the biggest number played thus far, it moves up to first place and knocks the other ones down. Then they play a Tiger 4, which means Tiger moves up to second place, knocking anything that was equal to or below it down. And then the next person plays an Elephant 5, which moves all the way to the front of the line. So that's the cards that players have played. Before each round of the race, you're going to turn over one of these uh, racing sprinting cards and you'll follow the numbers on that card. So let's say for example this card here was played the 75332 so the animal in first place goes 7 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 the animal that's in second place goes 5 so the tiger goes 5 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then 3 more 1, 2, 3 then the monkey gets to go 2 1, 2 since he landed on the zebra the zebra moves back one spot, and then the zebra goes forward two, one, two, which pushes him back one, which pushes him back one. And that is the current standings after the race. If Dr. Livingston ever falls behind, he catches up by one space. He's always there in your tail, always there to cause trouble. You have to know when to play your high and low cards. Everybody starts with one of the high cards of their animals, so the game isn't completely random and you get to see your initial hand before picking which animal you want to be. It's a very good game. You're never sure which cards are going to come up next because, you know, I showed you that seven, but this one, the next one might be a five, four, two, two, zero. Or you might get something that's low, like a three, two, two, one, zero. Maybe that's a time to play one of your lower cards. So there's that and you keep going around until the round's over and then each animal places. You get points for how you play, so you can play multiple rounds and add up the points, or you can just play one time, and whoever's in first place is the winner. High Low High Jinx is played very simply. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you put out a card for each uh, animal. High Low, uh, if it's 1 to 3, you put the animal on the low side. If it's 4, 5, and 6, you put the animal on the high side. Uh, each player has a hand of cards, and each turn they'll play a card, and then draw a card. When you play a card, you have to obey what it says here. For example, this says lower. So if I want to play a line card, I need to play something lower than a 3 or equal to a 3. And if I don't have any cards that match any of these requirements, let's say, you know, I have a 1 tiger, but it says I need to play higher than a 5. And 
I have a three elephant, but it says I need to play higher than an elephant. And I have a four zebra, but it says I need to play lower than a two. So I don't know what to do, so I pick one of them. I put this down for the zebra. And I take the whole stack of cards that's there. Fortunately, here it's only one card. And I put those face down in front of me. The card I played becomes the new card. So you will eventually, likely, have to take cards. If you play a card that is the exact same number as one that's already out there. Let's say, for example, here's a five elephant. And if I was able to play another five elephant on top of that, that's legal. And then if I want to, I can switch it from higher to lower. It's my choice. I can. I don't have to. You can also play Dr. Livingston cards, and they can go anywhere. However, when you play one of those, you take Dr. Livingston in front of you, and if you have him at the end of the game, you get four points. You don't want points. At the end of the game, you'll turn over all your face-up cards. If you have the most of an animal, you discard all those animals. Otherwise, the animals you get are worth points, plus good old Dr. Livingston, the player with the least points, is the winner. I got to play all five games of the Animal Safari, Duck Duck Safari. Uh, I, I like those two that I just showed you the best. To me, they're, they're the most interesting. Although the only one I really didn't like was the Memory Match one. I found that the one was a little, maybe the tiling one was a little too bit too complex for younger kids, but for the most part, everybody understood them. And like, for example, the racing game, you don't have to understand it to play a card and maybe you'll at least move your duck some distance. But candy playing of cards, I played with one adult who said, there is, this is just total luck, as my daughter wiped the floor with him because she knew it wasn't total luck. She figured out that you need to play the right cards at the right time. Save your high cards of your animal for when the score is the highest. So there's some strategy there, and it was fun. So it's neat that there's five games in a box, and if I like two out of five, that's definitely good enough to buy the set for. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I like four out of five, so that's good enough. And when I pulled my kids, they all liked something different. My... My Holly liked the memory match game the best. My oldest daughter liked the tile laying one. I liked the race one. My daughter liked the up and down one. So go figure. We all liked a different one. That's great. Worth buying. And it has those cute little duckies in it. So come on. Just go get it. Well, if you have a family. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.